Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 39 of our West Ham United FIFA 15 career mode and in today's episode it is the aftermath of an absolutely monumental transfer deadline day last episode. We now move into February, we are out of the transfer window and we are back to playing three games per episode. We play Sunderland, Everton and Watford in today's episode, shaping up nicely for next episode where we have the two legs of the Europa League round of 32 against Stuttgart and the Capital One Cup final against Chelsea. Obviously, last episode, we made two huge signings. Of course, Julian Draxler from Schalke and Vincent Abubakar from Porto for 9.5 million, with Draxler coming in for 3.7 million, plus Andre Ayew. Matt Jarvis was also sold on a hectic day, and we also played two games, of which I'm not even sure I can remember right now. I think, oh yeah, we played, um, we played... Someone in the cup, and then oh, we played Liverpool in the second leg of the Capital One Cup semi-final, and then we also played Norwich in the FA Cup. We won the first game and lost the second game. There in the background is the starting eleven: Gronier playing, but Abubakar and Draxler both making their debut with Schürrle and Vinaldum, the other attacking options. But Draxler immediately in the fourth minute, skipping away from a challenge with his pace and strength. They're trying to get past the goalkeeper as well with the finesse strike, but it's a good save from Costel Pantilimon. Now Scuffe with a huge mistake, it falls to Victor Barbo, who Sunderland have signed. He's going to play it off to Jack Rodwell, but he hits the side netting. A massive let off there for Scuffe. And now Jack Rodwell going straight through the back of uh, Grogne. Very lucky not to get a red card there. Vinaldum now played through, but uh, Sc um, sorry, Pantillam on there, managing to smother it pretty well. But another defensive mistake. This time from Uchida with a back heel I was not asking for. And thankfully, it's blazed wide in the end. But now Sunderland on the edge of half time going forward again. Rodwell, uh, sorry, Johnson now finding Rodwell in the centre. And it's he slides it in. It's a fantastic team goal but it had to be Jack Rodwell we go in at half time 1-0 Rodwell should be off the pitch I can't even believe he didn't get sent off for that challenge on Grogne Larson then hits the post for Sunderland we're really holding on now but Abubakar is going to try and change things in the last 10 minutes he cuts inside with a fake shot and slots it past Pantillamon it's another one of those types of goals there with a sort of cut inside and finesse past the goalkeeper but it is a brilliant goal from Abubakar really showing off that pace and power and celebrating with Julian Draxler the other man we signed on that deadline day. I need to change the number actually for Abubakar and make it number nine, but still there it is, the equaliser in the 81st minute. And will the momentum now swing towards us? Uh, Clement Grande is going to try and close down. I think it's Jordi Gomez. He's done that and he's now sort of running through on goal. Surely he can't score. A minute later, he goes for the strike and it's into the bottom corner. What a goal! That is from Clement Grogne, one in-game minute after Obubakar equalised. After, after he scored in the 81st minute, Grogne scores in the 82nd minute. And the game has turned on its head completely. Now, but now Valerie Germain putting the bot putting the ball into the box there for Seb Larson. He somehow hits the bar from about two yards out. And in the end, we managed to get it clear. And that is the end of the game. Hugely lucky, to be honest, not to lose that game. To be honest, there was a lot of luck involved in that game. Rodwell shouldn't have been on the pitch. Also, we probably should have conceded more goals than we did. But then we, I don't know, then the, that two goals in two minutes. We probably didn't deserve to win that game. Grogne, though, getting the man of the match after that fantastic goal. And Abubakar getting a good rating on his full debut as well. What a game that was, though. Fantastic comeback in the space of two minutes. But now we move on to the emails. And it's time for my question of the day, because you already, I think you might may already know from a few episodes ago, I'm stalling on this contract you see on the screen, the Poland uh, job offer. It's time for that to be renewed, but obviously if you stall on that, you get some more offers come in. So I've just stalled to see if I get any better offers, and then when it comes to February, I might accept the, uh, the Poland offer again. But as you can see, we've got a job offer from the France national team. So my question of the day to you guys, drop in the comment section, is should I accept that offer from France to become their new manager so that I I can obviously take part in, I think, is it, is it the World Cup? It's, it's, no, it's the Euros, sorry, the Euros, in the summer with France. So drop that in the comment section below. Should I accept that contract offer from the French national team? But now it is time to jump straight into the second game of this episode. We travel to Goodison Park to face Everton in the middle game of today's episode. As you can see, Draxler and Abubakar starting this one again. Danny Ings walking out there. And as you can see in the background, it would be a 4-1-2-1-2 formation. You can't see that yet, but it's sort of, that is, that's suggested. And as you can see there is confirmation. Delph is a defensive mid. Grogne is an attacking mid because I wasn't very happy with Vinaldum in that last game. Draxler and Schoenert as wingers and Abubakar 
and Ings up front. But as you can see, Everton going forward with the first chance, and Roberto Soldado, who they've clearly signed from Spurs there, with the first chance. It would take until the 30th minute for the next chance, and what a chance it was, because Kevin Morales for Everton scores an absolute stunner from outside the area. Very reminiscent, actually, of the goal that uh, Ener Valencia scored at the same ground, or in the same fixture, certainly earlier this season, except that didn't quite go into the top corner. But now, 10 minutes later, a Bubakar running past Leighton Baines. He cuts inside past John Stones. He's going to try and curl it around Jagielka into the bottom corner. And that is a fantastic solo goal from Vincent Abubakar to make it two goals in two games after his debut this episode. He's already turning into a pretty decent replacement for an Air Valencia. That is now the equaliser. We're going forward again with Abubakar. Lovely one-two between himself and Clement Grognier. He's in on goal, but that touch is a bit heavy. Tries to go around the goalkeeper, but a fantastic save from John Stones. Just takes it away from his feet. Now moving into the second half, and Danny Ings played forward on the hour mark, and he curls it just past the, uh, the far post. They're at a pretty tight angle. I would have been pretty surprised if he'd scored that. But now James McCarthy free in the box and a fantastic challenge from Umtiti to deny him a goal-scoring opportunity. And the game does, in fact, end one or a wonder strike from Morales giving them the lead. But a lovely solo goal from Abubakar cancelling it out. The game does end one all. Simone Scuffe in goal getting man of the match. A pretty solid performance from the defence there as well. Koyate actually playing in defence uh, at centre-back instead of Winston Reid. Good ratings as well for Grony and Abubakar as well as Uchida. And I think it was Scherner there out on the right-hand side. In the background, no. Now, after that game, you can see the top scorers. I haven't actually shown you this in a while. It's actually Edinson Cavani, top of that one on uh, for Manchester City, with 16 goals from CM de Jong of Newcastle, and Samia Nasri, weirdly, up there in third, with Juan Mata, Rooney, our only representative, actually, in the to uh, top 25 now, uh, with Enea Valencia being sold, is uh, Vinaldum on 10 there in sixth place. So, um... Pretty good for Vinaldum. That's a pretty large amount of goals to get in your first season as attacking mid. And as you can see, he's third on the assists list as well with seven. So Vinaldum having a, a huge impact on the squad in his first season. It's Mesut Ozil, though, heading the assist lists for Arsenal on eight with Cavani there on seven. Arturo Vidal there also joint uh, with Pereira and uh, our own Vinaldum there as well. As you can see further down the list, Delft there in 22nd, or I think it was five as well. But now it's time to get into the final game of this episode and I said when I played these guys last time there wasn't a reverse fixture I was dreading more than this one and we're playing Watford again I honestly despise playing this team they're bottom of the table with about negative three points and for some reason they come out and play like Barcelona every match as you can see we're walking out onto the pitch there at Ivy Park or Ivy Lane it should obviously be Watford Stadium. What is Watford Stadium? I know Watford Stadium, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Here you can see in the background, though, is the starting 11. We're going for a 4-2-3-1 wide formation with Abubakar. He's going to just try and continue his form. He's up front on his own with Vinaldum as an attacking mid. Draxler and Downing today as the wingers with Delph and Koyati there as defensive mids. But now, the first chance of the game is going to result in a penalty because Vinaldum as Ronaldo chops past Thomas Pudil, the Czech defender for Watford, and it's a red card because he was the last man. Explosive starts the game in the 13th minute. He sticks a foot out, takes out not only his own defender but also Vinaldum crucially and it's a penalty to us now Vinaldum's going to step up can he take it I'm flicking constantly to the far right but for some reason it continues to go down the center I was actually worried that it would go wide that's how far I was pushing towards the right hand side but it's a good save from Gomez and now Delph hitting the crossbar just a few minutes later with the man advantage, of course, we're going to have more chances. And now Delph bursting through the centre again. Another chance for him, but smothered by Herrero Gomez. It now falls for Abubakar. He's going to try and strike from outside the area, but he drags it just wide in the end. We're having all the early exchanges, all the chances early on. Abubakar now set uh, through there, over the top by Delph. He's going to try and chip it over the goalkeeper. And that is a wonderful finish from our new signing, Vincent Abubakar. Very reminiscent, actually, of a few NF Valencia finishes we've seen. And that is his third game in, th uh, sorry, third goal in three games since joining us. Just last episode, what a first episode he is having. And now we're going forward again, trying to make this uh, man advantage count. Vinaldum trying to curl it into the far post, but it just goes agonisingly wide. Watford going forward now in the 35th minute, and that looks like a foul to me on Igar. Is it Igarlo, or was that actually on Ayman Abdi? It's Umtiti who's given it away, but it's Igarlo who's going to step up. Will he do what Vinaldum couldn't earlier on in the game? He steps up, he d literally does what Vinaldum did. <laughs> it's not what I wanted him to do. But in the end, Vinaldum ended up putting it straight down the centre. Igalo's done the same. It's gone over Scuffe. I can't complain with Scuffe on that one because it's a game fault. But as you can see, Watford going forward again. Mark Pedraza is free in the centre and he slots it past Scuffe to complete the comeback. But now I just want to analyse something. Look at this, right? 
It's Cheku Koyate who's clearly marking Pedraza, but look, he just runs in the opposite direction. I wasn't controlling him. Clearly, you could see the red marker was over someone else. And this is what really frustrates me. They, FIFA always talk about AI intelligence being fixed, but clearly it isn't with defending like that. As you can see, we go forward again there with Draxa, but it's another good save from Gomez after Agala went forward earlier on. But from the resulting corner, Lasse Schoener is going to try and swing it in. It's towards Draxler again. He gets his head on it at the near post, and he equalises in the 76th minute to make it 2-2. It's what we deserve. We deserve to be winning this game. Game, to be quite honest, especially after West Ham, Adam, uh, sorry, West Ham, after Watford had a man sent off. But as you can see, the game ended 2-2. In the end, I suppose the luck balances out in this episode because we did certainly not deserve to win against Sunderland, but we didn't deserve to draw and lose points against Watford. So I suppose it balances out in the end. Great ratings for Delft and Abubakar especially, but yet again, our defence letting us down, really. That centre-back partnership of Reed and Umtiti just is not working at the moment. There you can see the stats as well. We absolutely dominated the game in comparison to Watford. Scuffe not making a save he's been getting out of that habit recently but again falling down into that into that unfortunate habit it has to be said of not making a single save in a game but as you can see uh, there is the table in the background we've actually dropped to fifth now after that episode but given we're only one point off fourth it means pretty much nothing. We actually play Spurs in two episodes from now, so that will be a crucial game in the in the fight for even the title, to be honest with you. We've sort of accidentally found, found ourselves in a fight for the title, but I hope you enjoyed this episode of Kareem. Feel free to smash the like button if you did. 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome. We managed to do that on the Deadline Day episode, so that would be awesome. Subscribe if you are new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. So it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.